Somehow, Nintendo returned. We have walked into a world where the Switch 2 is theoretically on the way. It's basically confirmed by people who aren't Nintendo. This same company seems to have this idea that people want an upgrade to the current Switch's existence. They're right. Yeah, this thing launched in 2017 week, being sandwiched right in between the PS4 Pro as well as the Xbox, Xerox, X, One Box, X, X, X didn't help. The difference between the base 8th gen consoles and the Switch felt noticeable enough to people even back then that some sort of upgrade was on the minds of many. Hence, you have a Switch Pro that's been in the conversation for ages, especially in recent years. What it could be, what might be in store for us, and just the thought of so many new things for us dedicated fans to get together and bitch about. Truly. The same era of Nintendo is on the horizon. And I for one am as sick as everyone else about hearing about the damn thing. Which is why I'm reminding you all about it and projectile vomiting my own opinion all over the world. You're welcome. I've seen some people say they straight up don't believe it's gonna happen. That all these leaks are meaningless until a real announcement is made. And more than this, that Nintendo won't make a Switch 2, rather they'll produce a refresh in the same vein as the new 3DS, as it just makes more sense sense. Now, these are valid point, but have you considered it's very fun to talk about lies? But okay, I'll play along. Let's let's start by asking why? Why would Nintendo abandon their 140 million install base? Sure, an insane install base still exists on the Switch and starting fresh on a new system means having to build all that back up again. Sure, the fact that Wonder, Pikmin 4 and Tears of the Kingdom sold as well as they did shows that the user base is insanely active and more than willing to buy games for outdated hardware. Sure, that massive install base is also the same reason God of War Ragnarok and Halo Infinite released on PS4 and Xbox One, respectively. These games don't need to be locked to one platform. Graphics be damned. Sure, I wish Wish I felt happy and optimistic about my current life situation. So I can understand why they would want to prolong this thing as long as possible. It is fucking printing money. There are two small reasons, three big reasons, and one major reason as to why I'm certain next year is the year of the Switch Deluxe. Or oh, this year, depending on how much you believe the recent fibs. I believe the recent fibs. Let's start with A. It's old. Old enough to be an iPad kid, man. Seven whole years of the Switch. The longest Nintendo generation since the 3DS. At this point, the hardware is rusty. Even for first party releases, a squeezing the best out of what their hardware can do is what makes Nintendo Nintendo. Time and time again, limitations have proven to spur creativity as it forces developers to think outside of the box. The box would explode if it ran Breath of the Wild at 60 FPS. The fact that we've even gotten games like Astral Chain, Mario Odyssey, or Popeye is very impressive. But that's one side of the story. Generally, if the name of a game's publisher doesn't rhyme with Nintendo, it probably won't utilize the console's full potential. And as such, we've ended up with very few third-party ports over the years, and most of the ports we do get feel like targeted harassment. From these factors, I just get the impression that third-party sales must have suffered from the reputation they gained over time of being on the Switch. There is no sauce, I'm just incredibly good at reading the room. Don't get me wrong, we've gotten some good ports, some amazing ports, but there've been times when I pop a game in on my Switch and just... Uh, in most cases, it's not even the core graphics I have a problem with, it's the resolution, and certain types of games just aren't gonna suffer from this. But that's certain types, not all types. Handheld mode ends up being a better option because, one, magic, and two, I just don't think 720p or sub 900p looks the best on a 50-inch 4K TV. It especially feels cheap when you're playing on a current console, unlike an Xbox or a Wii U. It's that, but also something to do with the image being blown and expanded to fit more pixels. 720p on a smaller screen that was made for 720p? Great, games just genuinely look clearer, they look more refined. I have no issue with 1080p, and 1080p looks great in pretty much all instances to me, but you've gotta remember, 
most Switch games don't even get a full 1080. Dynamic resolution can take that down a peg. Maybe it's my TV settings, but I don't know, man. If I wanted to see blur, I would take my glasses off and then mace myself. The Switch feeling rusty is also why I've been mainly using my brother's PlayStation 5 the past few months. I must legally specify that it is not mine because I refuse to pay for something that looks like this and also the PS4. It was just damn refreshing to play a modern looking, modern feeling game on my TV. Forgive me, Furukawa-san, I didn't mean to stray from the teachings. The PlayStation turned off by itself. B, adding on to that, the novelty has kind of worn out. I still love this thing, but always will, but most people have come to comprehend. Playing Sonic Frontiers with two meters a pop in on the toilet. I suppose if I shoved a Nintendo Switch into an 80 year old Amish peasant's hands, he'd beg for God's forgiveness, but, it's not quite the same. Shitting simply doesn't feel fresh or exciting anymore, and I think Nintendo knows this, which is why the OLED split it out. Then you have the Steam Deck, the PlayStation Paul, for some reason, and the Asus ROG Ally. These may not be perfect replacements, but they are options that show consumers Nintendo isn't the only place you can get console gaming on the go, at least anymore. However, a fresh new Nintendo system would 100% bring the excitement back to not only the general public, but bathrooms everywhere, even with uh, competition diluting the wars. Like a poop. E, as someone who recently obtained an RDX 4060, Actually, I have no point here, I just wanted to show it off. Look how cute he is. D, Nintendo has a limited amount of flesh. They can't keep making blockbusters from scratch for this thing. I guarantee you, Mario Wonder and Pikmin 4 only exist because they started being made in the damn Obama administration. <laughs> Fuck you, I don't need a sauce. The creatures of Nintendo's premier development studios have got to be at least a little bored making big budget games for roughly the same level of hardware for over 10 years. So do you really think they're sitting there and brainstorming a whole gallery of games to release in 2025 and 2026 for this thing? Do you? Because now that I just said it, I'm starting to doubt myself. Even so, when I looked at Nintendo's release calendar for the first half of the year, I couldn't help but see this as a sign of the end. These aren't bad games, I would know, I haven't played them, but you must admit this lineup does feel... Fillery, it's fillery. A remake, a remaster, a remake, a remake, a re-entering into the fabulous triumphant world of Princess Peach's solo adventures, the first one in over a decade. A remake, everyone can tell this gap is a clear indication that they're gearing up for something. I doubt that after releasing multiple big games consecutively from their internal studios that they would try to make one big bombastic year, especially after last year, 2023. They went through so much. Nintendo is big, but they're also big on polish when they aren't being blackmailed. So I predict that at best we get Metroid Prime 4 and Zelda remasters by the end of the year. Ah, uh, there is Monkey Ball too, I guess, but as a third party game. Following these releases, Pokemon Z releases on both platforms to send off the console as a final swan song and to welcome us to the new era. Although Nintendo is a bitch, so maybe they'll prove me wrong and shit out a new Zelda to coincide with the latest Horizon DLC drop. See, console sales have steadily declined over time, which doesn't mean much, but still. Uh, the writing is on the wall. The Switch won't be peaking like this again. And that means that as the years go on, there are less and less people out there willing to buy Switches. Chances are, if you're interested in Nintendo at this point, you probably have a Switch or you pirate and you have no intention of buying a Switch, or you're a child with no money. I relate to this. The install base can only grow so much. Then there's F. I want a, I want a new one. I want a new one. I want a new one. And that's all the reasons. But do you know what they'll call the successor? That's what I thought. Look. There's been a lot of names thrown around over the years, and I've gotten comfortable seeing Switch 2, but this is Nintendo. Sure, they aren't evil, but they do like to be unconventional with their naming schemes. The Game Boy became Game Boy Advance, the DS became 3DS, and the Wii accused me of something. I love how Nintendo names things, so I, I hope they don't go the PlayStation route of being as boring as is humanly possible. Anyway, for the past couple of years, I've been racking my brain trying to think of what possible title Nintendo could go along with here, and finally, 
I think I figured it out. Switch TVA 2025. It, it, it rolls right off the tongue. It it rolls right off the tongue. I don't think it's a stretch to say that TVA 2025 has a tough act to follow. It's exhausting to even look at what the Switch has accomplished and honestly take longer, Nintendo, let me catch up. Maybe this little device can squeeze out more. Maybe people don't want the Switch train to stop chugging. I get that, but I feel it's a good time to call it a day. It had a good run.